This is how the Central Coast wakes up and rocks. Anybody on the uh, text lines saying that they have a situation where their food has been sabotaged, like they have been contaminated, spiked. Spike punch uh, is something that you can definitely go for. I always wanted to do the anti-spiked punch, and the anti-spike punch was have a big kegger, have a huge kegger. Say, all right, we got a keg or Coors Light. Here we go. Everybody drink up. I know, and you want it to be fake beer. Oh, duels. <laughs> I want to just watch. See how the party of full. I'm pretty sure I would take a drink of that and go, this is not Coors Light, but I'm used to drinking you it. You don't know. Yeah, And then you number would. two, I'd be like, this, why would, does this taste like about, carbonated water? What about the people that are like, man, I'm getting so smashed right now, man. And then at about midnight... <laughs> When everybody's falling down, people are making out the corner, everybody's falling down. Wasn't that the old Billy Madison stand-up thing with the pencil shavings? Wasn't him that did that? Well, it was Adam Sandler. No. Or, what did I say? Billy Madison? Yeah. Same guy. Yeah. Adam Sandler, yes, of course. On his on his comedy album? Uh, yeah, apparently I know him as Billy Madison more than I know him as Adam Sandler. <laughs> Jesus. I, by the way, I watched Hubert, Hubie oh, you Halloween. Did. did you like it? Come on, it's ridiculous. <laughs> It's, it's probably really gauged for like a 10 to 12 year old. I like There is how, some swear words in it though. I was surprised because like the S word and I've not seen it. Um, but I've seen the, you know, the, the promos for it. Every time you turn on Netflix, the promos pop up. Right. And, um, and I do like the fact that Julie Bowen and, uh, Adam Sandler, they, they, I mean, it's so not they, believable. They, they get, they she's, get, she's totally likes, is in love with this guy. And, and she was like the high school babe and he was like the, you know, they, they get it back the, together. The they, they, they reprise that Happy Gilmore uh, yeah. relationship. I like that. I, uh, that, I mean, it's you still know, very pretty, good, by the way. It's a good throwback. She's, Julie life Bowen's been, great. Li- life has been very good You've to Julie You've got to watch Modern Family. I mean, she's just... I can't believe you have never seen Modern Family. I know, Family. i got to sit down and watch it. it the is thing is, crazy I'll sit me. there and I'll watch the, uh, you know, the Office, the entire season, the entire show for... Uh, you know, the 25th time. Yeah, if you I, love The Office, then you'll love Modern Family. It is great. Somebody wrote in, I didn't want to have a name, it just says they were dosed with magic mushrooms that was mixed in with spaghetti that was left in the fridge by a roommate. Mm-hmm. Okay, roommates. why would you put mushrooms in spaghetti? Because that's just an easy way of, uh, of of choking them down? Never get druggy roommates. Yeah. Or never get experimentation roommates, you know? Because experimentation roommates, they will go through their phases. Like sometimes, well, that'll teach you to eat your roommate's food, though, right? Yeah, maybe, you, maybe you were eating your roommate's food, and they were wanted to put an end to it. God, I hated when I would. For me, it was milk. I would go to get some milk, and one of our stupid roommates, when we lived in this house, we 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 called the Delta Burke house. We made up our own frat, uh, Delta Burke, like from uh, what was that show that she was on, Designing Just, Women? Yes. Anyways, and, and, our, uh, and our sister sorority was the Omar Epsilon. Yeah. Anyways, and we were just making fun of fraternities. But there was like, I don't know, seven of us that lived in this house. And Doug and Kip. DB. And I know Andy. They, would, they love cereal. And I could never keep milk in the house. And I wasn't a cereal guy. I just like to drink milk. I've always liked to drink milk. Still do. And every time I go for my milk, there'd be just like, you know, what a jerk. They would leave you like this much. Hey, they're like leaving a you shot. Something. Like, they're... what, two ounces? is re- Come on, just finish it. At least they're leaving you something. And it's not even yours. And we never had a rule like, oh, yeah, everybody just help yourself. No, everybody had their own kind of shell for their own thing. I always thought it would be wise to everybody had their own refrigerator. Yeah. Like, like their own little refrigerator. With a lock and key. True, yeah. But that's one way to fix your roommates if they're stealing your food. Dose him with some magic mushroom or yeah. some X-Lax. That's kind of what I did to that kid that would, he, he, guess what? He never, he, number one, he never sat next to me again. And number two, he never talked to me again. So I didn't have to worry about know, him always could, asking me could have just for whatever said, I have. It's like, no, get your no. own. You could have just said no. no. I, I'm pretty sure I could have, but I was too nice. Too nice. So you decided to poison him with laxatives. Uh, you know, poison is a strong word. I, would, I like drug. You're uh, very passive aggressive. Like, you know that's what? the most passive aggressive <laughs> thing that you could do. I would say, that's like passive aggressive. Poison That's anybody. like the Saddam Hussein of no. passive aggressiveness. 85% of people are saying no. They have never been drugged mm. or sabotaged. That's good. Um, nobody actually that's said yes. Statistic. Let me refresh like this that. in case this is, needs to be refreshed. But everybody else just said, uh, I think so, but I don't have any proof. Mm. 
You can vote now, KZOZ.com. Yeah, everybody has that night of drinking where they wake up the next morning and they go, what? I didn't even drink that much last night. What the hell happened? <laughs> Pollard time? Yeah, I've yeah. seen all kinds of articles kicking around um, the Internet from about week two or so saying that there are a number of teams that should try to trade for Zeke and that the Cowboys would be willing to do so. I only think that that willingness goes up now that Dak is on the shelf and the season is in perils. But here's the thing. They are in first place of the NFC East. This is the Well, for now. Worst. For now. What do you mean for now? For now. This team is not going to win. Look at the Eagles. Look at the Giants. Look at football team. They're not They're gonna all win. terrible. They're not going to win. They're all going to beat up. The only wins they're going to get is against each other in that they they can't beat anybody out of the conference. I think they might lose to the Reds, or sorry, the football team in Washington next week. I know. This week. But that's what I'm saying is they, they beat up on each other. Football team might win. Cowboys might win. Whoever comes out of that division, they're mark gonna my lose words. To... Mark my words right now. Whoever comes out of that division is going to have six, maybe seven wins and win that division. I'm telling you right now, they've got Washington this week, Philadelphia next week. I don't think they can beat Philadelphia. I know they're not going to beat Pittsburgh uh, or Philadelphia, Minnesota. Philadelphia's one four and one on the season. Baltimore, Cincinnati, maybe, but Cowboys probably are not. Two and three on the season and sitting in first place. San Francisco, no. And then they got Philadelphia again, and then they maybe get the Giants. This is why I say anybody who comes out of that division as the champion is going to have six or seven wins because. They can't beat anybody outside of their division unless they were to play the Jets. If anybody has the Jets on their roster, I mean on their the schedule, I don't, don't think, I don't think anybody plays the Jets in the NFC East this year. But uh, that's the only other win outside of the conference. Maybe the Bengals? As of this morning, the Cowboys are a 75, 75% of the red zone nation is picking Dallas. Now I think that was from last night. I bet you people come in today. Or tomorrow, there, yeah. and they switch that, and that balances out to more of a 50 50. Where are they playing next they're week? They're traveling to D.C. Oh, to take team? on the uh, Washington football team. <laughs> I'm not calling them the football team anymore. You I'm just going to call them Washington. No, I'm just going to call them Washington. I love calling them football no, team. No, that sounds so stupid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course it's a football team. Hey, you get what you ask for, right? <laughs> you want to be called football team? I'm going to call you football team. <laughs> football team. Anyways. Tomorrow we'll have to talk about our upsets of the week. God, about, I'm, I'm stinking it up so bad in this Red Zone Challenge. I'm at the bottom of our pack. I've only got 55 points so far in the season, which I think puts me, I don't know, somewhere near the bottom. How about that football team, though? <laughs> 292 <laughs> out of 397 here on the Central Coast. I'm 31,000 in the Nathan. I mean, just sucks. I suck at picking these games. Well, listen to this, some new rules coming to this week's debate. The debate commission just announced minutes ago that officials will be able to mute both President Trump and Joe Biden's microphones. The commission reports the candidates will each receive two minutes of uninterrupted time for each segment. <laughs> this comes after a chaotic first debate that included a number of interruptions. You are fake news. No, nope, that's the fact there, Don. They're going to shut you down. Boy, this is going to be interesting because you know... Just because they turn his mic off doesn't mean he's wow. going to stop talking. <laughs> and I don't like this. I, I don't. I don't like this. You know what? I don't. Now this care. whole thing is bad. But, but he also he also shouldn't interrupt. He should. I understand it's hard not to when you think someone is is telling a complete falsity or a lie, or you don't agree with it, or you think that they're framing you or whatever. I I understand he in his mind he thinks it's justified, but it just ends up being. You know, a mess. But it's it's 2020. Why does it have to be like this? Okay, we are not up against network de deadlines. In fact, nothing says a network has to carry the debate. Make the debate available on YouTube, and no time limits. And you sit them and let and let them talk. This and is, yes, there needs to be some structure to it. Right. But the hard cutoff of okay, you got two minutes, and then I'm cutting yeah, yeah, your and mic. I'm cutting you off. Uh, it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't do the voting public. A I service. understand. You only have so much time. So say, you know what, you have two minutes, and then you know once the two minutes goes, if they're still going at some point when they have a pause, say, can you wrap it up? Yes. You know? or, or, yeah. Okay, please wrap it up or something like that. And just and then they'll wrap it up. But you, it's just it's like this. 
like Chris Chris Wallace. I mean, he well, was he was like trying to like puff up his chest, and he was like, "No, I'm going to be in charge of this debate, guys." And, this and it's is, like, well, what is that doing? And this is what it comes down. to. I'm so okay. sick of these broadcasters, these news journalists that are that are moderating these things. The questions are terrible, and you watch; it'll be the same lame ass questions for both sides. It'll be talking about Biden and the Green Party and the and the Supreme Court, which I know is a big deal. But and the Trump will be COVID and how he got it and. And you know, who knows, you know, how white supremacy, I mean, come on, can we move on? Can we ask him a real question about the future? Can we try to get somewhere else no. than where we've been? No. Because the last two debates, which NBC didn't even air the uh, the debate, uh, no, the that, town hall thing. Yeah, so no. I, I had to go find video clips of that. But it was the same thing. Savannah Guthrie, it was like she came in to fight him. It's like, okay, you're not there to fight. You're just there to ask questions and let people in the audience ask questions. People in the audience didn't even get a chance to ask questions until the very end because she wanted to get into this thing. It's like journalists. Okay, Jeremy, this is the thing. Okay, journalists now have to become stars in order to secure their next contract. So this is their moment to go out and see. The thing is, the story used to be never be about the journalist. The thing is, if you made yourself the story, then you were the worst journalist ever. The story was you were never to get in the way. You were to provide the information and get the answers, but never to become the story. And everybody on TV today, at least if you're on a network, is has to be about them becoming the story. Yeah. And and it's it's a it just fails all of us. And it's like, why do I even want to watch this? But I do want to see what happens with the mic thing. <laughs> okay, I've got my soapbox now. I don't. I don't. I, in fact, <laughs> it's going to be a train wreck. I'm I'm less likely to watch because of it because I I don't want to get frustrated because what I found myself doing and it, this was on both fronts um, on both of the previous debates is I didn't like when Mike Wallace was cutting um, them off because I'm like you know what you know they're going to finish eventually okay they can't go on there and just filibuster for 15 minutes it's not that's not the format for it. So just because your light goes off and you're trained like Pavlov's dog, don't deprive the American people of the information that their, um, you know, potential leaders are giving to them. And the same thing happened with the uh, Harris and, um, and, Pence. and Pence debate. Yeah. You know, it was it was it was she was, was better. But yeah, she was but much she was, better. She was still like they were. They, you could tell they were wrapping up. Yeah, but she still kept wanting were, to interrupt. She's like, she's like, okay, you've had enough time. You've had enough time, and and she's she's still droning on about. It. It's like quiet. Let them finish. What annoyed and me, then, and then move on. Was she would you know you know let's say uh, you know one side would make an argument, but they would accuse the other side of something, and then you would go to the other side. And she was like, oh, no, but you only have 30 seconds. 30 seconds, my ass. She just had five minutes or he just had five. It's like, come on. Like, just let them finish their thought. Don't interrupt them. And then they'll be done. Too many rules. And if it's getting a little long, just say, hey, can you wrap it up? We need to move on. I and think, then let them just finish their thought and move on. I think the overreaching um, parameters of having rules during the debate lead to a more toxic environment to have a discussion. I, I think that they could have better discussions as if they were just to sit down and talk. Just sit down and talk. Have a person there to moderate and, and have them do exactly that. Just moderate. Just let these people talk. Let them talk back and forth. Throw a subject out there. Let them talk about the subject. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You guys want to talk about it amongst each other? Go ahead. you got five minutes. Talk about it amongst each other. All right. Your five minutes is coming to an end. If it goes five minutes and 30 seconds, so be it. It goes five minutes and 45 seconds. So be it. It needs to, they need to have an engaging conversation and not let the Gestapo be the star of the show. But that, unfortunately, the networks lean on the Gestapos to be the star of the show because it gives the American people something to talk about. Right. And that's their networks. What if instead of muting the mic, we put a shot collar on them? And uh, not, not to wrap up, but if they start interrupting the other person. In the middle of their two minutes. It's a little bit too much given their age, I would say. <laughs> Mike, thanks for writing in. Um, I, I would say, I would say, oh, water gun. <laughs> water gun. Water gun? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, okay. You know what? I'm going to scoot you with water <laughs> if you don't wrap it up within 10 seconds. All right? <laughs> that would be and, then, and then you got 10 seconds, and then... <laughs> I told you. No, it's like, shoot you remember water. that show uh, that we used to watch on Nickelodeon where they'd slime people? Yeah, double dare. Or like Ellen That's has her game of games and they, they shoot crap at you. <laughs>
Oh, uh, I know that would never fly, but damn it, I think you would get more viewers, that's for sure. Subscribe to the Jeff and Jeremy podcast now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. It's your Central Coast commute-friendly podcast.